Hi everybody, my name is Caden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And this is Enoch. We are going over this crazy book here. We are trying to understand. We are trying to figure out what Enoch is all about. And it's honestly kind of confusing, but we're getting through it. We're going we're going over some of the things. We're now, I think, a third of the way through. I think we're almost there. We're on chapter 76 of 108. Eight. So that's a little more than a third, son. That'd be three quarters almost. All right, yeah, so we're almost there. Thank you guys very, very much for I joining it was 160 us. 160 or so. All right, thank you very much, son. Uh, thank you guys very much for being with us and for participating in this. Now, Ken, it's been a couple of days, and the thing about a, uh, human memory is sometimes we don't remember things. Do you guys remember what it was that we last read? As Kate turns his page. Okay. We were talking about the sun and the moon when it rises, oh, when yeah. it sets. The red, we went, the we many days the we have. Okay, okay. So we went over the sun and the gates and how it how it ran on its own chariot, how the angels ran them day by day, how they went into the gates, how different times were, how mm -hmm. there was more time in the morning and then night, and then as they get to the final gate, it, it went in reverse, there was more time at night than in the day. Yeah, so we had, um, what do we have, six gates? Six, six, six different on gates side. on each side. So total and, 12. And we had, they were starting off at like gate three or something, no. right? Fourth. Or fourth gate, fourth gate. Mm -hmm. Nicole remembers. Yeah, so we went out the fourth gate, and then it would go in the fourth gate, and then it would do that for 30 days. Then it would go into like the fifth gate, right? And then it would go out of the fifth gate. 30 days or 31 days? 31. 31. And so basically the gate system is what determines our daylight hours. That is how we know how long the sun goes. And for anybody that hasn't tuned in to any of our stuff, I will apologize for my ceiling and for my roof right here. We will all try to talk into the microphone and talk over this, but literally we just can't do this in the right time because uh, it seems like it just goes from sun up to sun down and my roof talks. And so maybe one day um, we will end up with tiles or something where we can actually have like a real house. But for right now, we literally live kind of almost outside. And so that's what you're hearing. You're hearing the outside elements um, inside. So, let's begin, gentlemen, and let's see where we are at. And I do not need a handy-dandy anything, so I'm going to do the handy-dandy um, Sefer. Now, I am reading out of the Sefer. We are in Enoch 76. Cade is reading a little different today. What are you reading out of? Uh, the Lost Books of the Bible, The Great Rejected Text. By Joseph B. Lumpkin. Joseph B. Lumpkin. Nicole? I'm reading Hallelujah Scriptures. And I'm reading out WordPress site. All right, some guys WordPress site. Little guy, you're going to have to speak a little louder. The roof is kind of probably overtaking a lot of this. I do have a uh, loud, booming voice, so I will lower myself if you guys will amplify yourself, and hopefully we'll get through this. All right, Enoch 76. And the extremities of the earth I beheld, twelve gates open for all the winds, from which they proceed and blow over the earth. Three of them are open in the front of heaven, three in the west, three on the right side of heaven, and three on the left. The first three are those which are towards the east, three are towards the north, three are those which are upon the left towards the south and three on the west from four of them proceeds winds of blessing and of health and from eight proceed winds of punishment when they are sent to destroy the earth and the heaven above it and all its inhabitants and all which are in the waters or on dry land you guys is all the same um except for where your says the winds of, where your says winds of blessing and health mine says winds of blessing and peace Okay. So please. I want to read mine a little bit. All right, let's do it. Through four of these comes winds of Baruka and prosperity, and from the eighth come hurtful winds when they are sent. They bring destruction on all the earth and the water upon it, and on all who dwell upon it, and all the which are in the water and on the land. Okay. So they're basically, I mean, what, what would you guys call punishing winds? Uh, hurricanes, I would assume, right? Tsunamis. Well, I mean, those are kind of winds, I guess. I guess those are kind of, they're specialty kind of winds. But, yeah, um, we have massive wind here. That's one of the things here. We have two seasons. Actually, we have, well, it's really two seasons. It's wet and dry, but during dry season, it's windy. Like, it will blow your house over. It will literally, we've seen just stuff just get crazy. Um, so, any, any more wind would probably be a destructing wind. Like, it could totally blow our house over. No problem. All right, so we're on four here. I'm on five, but I don't know where you're at. Okay, four. I think we're on four. Okay, pay yeah, attention, he's buddy. Yeah, different than ours. All right, the first of these winds proceed from the gate termed the eastern through the first gate on the east, which inclines southward. From this gate goes forth destruction, drought, heat, and perdition. All right, so the first of these winds proceeds from the gate team the eastern. So we have an east, it, basically like the sun. It comes up in the east, right? 
and it's going to blow where? Towards uh, the south. Yeah, it East inclines, towards, inclines towards southwards, south. which would kind of seem like the wind. Most of the time, the wind seems to blow in, in one direction, I think. I don't know. All right. From the second gate, the middle one precedes equity. Their issue from it rain, fruitfulness, health, and dew. And from the third gate northwards proceed cold and drought. After these proceed the south winds through the three principal gates. Through their first gate, which inclines eastward, proceeds a hot wind. Okay, anyone have anything different? No, no that's the no. same. Okay, but from the middle gate proceed grateful odor, dew, rain, health, and life. This is fragrant smells. Okay. Grateful odor, those are fragrant smells. I think you'd be happy. At least it wouldn't be like a pig farm or something. Yeah, because it always smells really like refreshing when it rains. It does. It does. All right. From the third gate, which is westwards, proceed dew, rain, blight, and destruction. Well, yours says blight, mine says locusts. Locusts? Yeah. Proceed dew, rain, locusts? Uh huh, and desolation. Wow. Okay. I guess the locusts are part of Yah's blight or something. All right, after these are the winds to the north, which is called the sea, from three gates. The seventh gate is on the east, inclining southward. From this proceeds dew, rain, blight, and destruction. You guys say locusts Locus. again? Yep. All right, from the middle direct gate proceed rain, dew, life, and health. Anyone have anything different? No. Wow, life and health, that is interesting. It says prosperity, but that's... Prosperity. The huh. same as hell. Hmm. And from the third gate, which is westwards, inclining towards the south, proceed mist, frost, r- snow, rain, dew, and blight. Mine just says cloud and frost. It doesn't say mist. It says cloud and, fr- uh-huh. and frost? Okay. Mine says dew and rain, hoarfrost and cold, and snow and frost. Okay. All right. Ten. After these four are the winds to the west. From the first gate, inclining northwards, proceed dew, rain, frost, cold, snow, and chill. From the middle gate proceed rain, health, and blessing. Mine said ice. Ice. Mine says frost. Uh, yours says frost instead of what? It okay. said last one, chill. Chill. Okay, but did yours say frost above? Because mine says northwards proceed dew, rain, frost, cold, snow, and chill. Mine doesn't include rain. No rain? No, mine says dew, frost, and cold, and snow, and ice. Eli, you got rain coming out of yours? I don't even see anything... It has anything to do with north in the mind. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. Is- it has rain, uh, hoar frost, cold snow, and frost. All right. Make sure you aim that little little tiny uh, mouth right there to that speaker so we can hear this. Thanks, Eli. All right. So that's back to 11. And from the last gate, which is south words, proceed drought, destruction, scorching, and perdition. The account of the twelve gates of the four quarters of heaven is ended. All their laws, all their punishment, and the health of them have I explained to you, my son, Methuselah. Okay, so this is interesting. This this is uh, actually not Enoch that we're reading. I mean, this is um, somebody that explains to Methuselah. Who would that be? said my son, Methuselah, so Methuselah's dad. Methuselah is his dad, isn't it? Methuselah's son is Enoch, isn't it? Yeah. Is that? Am I off? Yeah, Methuselah Lamech Noah. Methuselah Malek. Uh, we're looking here. Yeah, Enoch's son is Methuselah. Enoch's son is Methuselah. So it's okay. Still Enoch. Okay, this so is he's Enoch. Okay. Explaining it to his son. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Uh, hope you guys do too. <laughs> I didn't. All right. Seventy-seven. The first wind is called the eastern because it is the first. The second is called the south because El Elyon there descends. And frequently there descends and is blessed forever. Okay, you have that, Nicole? Yeah, it says, And the first quarter is called the east, because it is the first, and the second, the south, because the Most High will descend there, even there, in quite a special sense. He will... Will he who is Baruch forever descend? Okay. Eli, you got the same? Yeah. Okay. Okay, do you anything change on yours? No. Okay. The western wind has the name of Dimunition. Because there all the luminaries of heaven are demonized dimin- and descend. Wait. Diminish. Diminish. Mine says wane. Wane, yes. Yeah. Okay, I guess here. I don't have English. I don't know what English is. And the is. west quarter is named diminish. Because there all the luminaries of heaven wane and go down. Mine says, and the eastern quarter is called waning because there all the lights of heaven wane and go down. East or west? West. 
Okay, you said east. Oh, sorry. Okay, I guess you can't read. I can't speak English. One of the, <laughs> here we are. All right, diminished and descend. Okay, the fourth. The fourth wind, which is named the north, is divided into three parts, one of which is for the habitation of man, another for seas of water with valleys, woods, rivers, shady places, and snow, and the third part, paradise. Seven high mountains. Okay, Nicole, what do you have? You Mine has have. nothing about snow. And the fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. The first of them is for the dwelling of men. The second contains seas of water, and the abyss and the forest, and the rivers and darkness and clouds. And the third part contains the garden of righteousness. Okay, Eli, did you say snow? Does he want to tell us no. say snow? No, mine is also snow. All right, Dr. Pigeon is really m messing this up. Mine says mist instead of cloud in yours. So we have... Four different translations and four different four different readings of it. All right, so I guess we make what we can make out of it. Um, all right, seven high mountains I beheld, higher than all the mountains of the earth, from which frost proceeds, while days, seasons, and years depart and pass away. Seven rivers I beheld upon earth, greater than all rivers, one of which takes its course from the west into a great sea its water flows. Okay, two come from the north to the sea, their waters flowing into the Eurathian Sea on the east, and with respect to the remaining four, they take their course in the cavity of the north. Two to their sea, the Eurathian Sea, and two are poured into a great sea, where also it is said it is a desert. Where it is said is a desert. Okay, seven great islands I saw in the sea and on the earth, seven in the great sea. All right, would anyone have anything different? No, no mine just says eastern sea. Eastern Sea? Uh-huh. The Eastern Sea and the Great Sea. Well, all I can say is a good thing this isn't Torah, because we'd be totally confused. Yeah. Okay. 78. The names of the sun are these. One, Arias, Arias, the other, Tomas. All right. So Tom why why does it have the names of the sun are these? Why is one? Why are there two names? I don't know. So, Arius, is that what you guys have? A-R-Y-A-R-E-S? Mine's O-R-Y-A-R-E-S. Mine's O-R-J, so Orgerus. Orgerus, and the other, Tomas? Tomas. So Mine, mine's Toma. Mine's Tomas, says Toma, T-O-M-A-S-E-S. -E I guess, Eli, it could be like you, Cookie, and having multiple names. Right, Elk? Right. Okay. <laughs> I guess, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. All right. Yeah, the moon has four names. The first is Asonia. The second is Elba. The third, Benes, and the fourth, Ere. And I know why she has four different ones. Why? Because of her phases that she goes through. Like multiple personality disorder? Hey, we're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are the two great luminaries whose orbs are as orbs of heaven, and the dimensions are uh, dimensions of both are equal. All right. These are the two. So basically it says the sun and the moon, and I think we've read this before, are the exact same size. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, which that is, a, I mean, if, if either NASA's lying or Yah's scriptures are, are lying. So I would have to go the NASA people. Um, all right, four. In the orb of the sun are seven parts of light, which are added to it more than to the moon. By measure it is put in until the seventh portion of the sun is departed. They set, enter into the western gate, circuit by the north, and through the eastern gate go forth over the face of heaven. Let right. me read this one. All right. And they go down and enter the portals of the west and make their revolution by the north and come forth through the eastern portals on the face of the Shamayim. Okay. So I think this is say, it's saying the same thing that we said before. It comes out of the east, it goes over to the west, and somehow it it's circuits. In the north. When it circuits, I don't think it's like on. Like it's either off or... But I'm thinking maybe for the other part of... The side of the world, it's on for them because it's coming back. That's how we Maybe. have the different times of day, is because it's circling back over to get to the other portal. So it just goes in the gate for like five minutes, then goes back out the gate or something. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. All right. When the moon rises, it appears in heaven, and the half of a seventh portion of light is all in it. In fourteen, the whole of its light is completed. So this is, you know, if you want to adjust this to what we know of in reality, we know that it's true, right? Nicole? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to read mine because mine makes a little more sense. Okay. And when the moon rises, one fourteenth part of it appears in the Shamayim. The light becomes full in her. On the fourteenth day, she accomplishes her light. So on the fourteenth day is when we have full moons. 
That's what that's saying. Right. And then, as you said the other day, because I don't study the moons at all, but basically goes from 14, and then it goes 13, 12, 11, all the way down to 1, where it goes it goes full moon to back to stage 1. Yes. Right? Okay. So there's 14 parts of it. Back to full moon, and then what they call no moon, but they call it the new moon on the regular calendar, but that's not our new moon. The next day is the new moon for us. The new moon is the sliver. Is the sliver, and it right. explains that, too, in the next coming chapters. All right. Um... In whole, the whole, in fourteen, the whole of this light is completed. Three quintuples light is put into it okay. until. Okay, what do you got? And fifteen parts of the light are transferred to her till the fifteenth day. Wow, three quintuple a quintuple must be a five. So I did I didn't know what that words because we have first uh, first uh, what is it? Single, double, triple, quadruple. Quadruple. Quintuple. Quintuple. Yeah. I knew that. One. And I'm not gonna say the next one because it sounds bad. I think. Yeah. Um. Okay, so three quintuples light is put into it until 15 its light is completed. According to the signs of the year, it has three quintuples. Okay, so that's basically saying three sets of five, and right? And she becomes 15 parts. So how does that work if you're on 14 days, right? The new moon, the very first day is, is a sliver, right? Mm -hmm. And so the second day would be a, a one so seventh So basically bigger. there's two no, nights. No, one fourteenth. There's two nights of it being full. Okay. The 14th and the 15th okay. are completely full moons because it's just barely diminishing on that 15th day. So it's still the full moon. All right. And I'm about to slaughter this word again. Um, how come I can't get this word? Diminution? Dimin diminishings. Diminution. Uh, this is different. It's diminution. All right. During this diminution. <laughs> what does yours say, Nicole? Diminishing. Diminishing. I'll just use that word. During this diminishing, I don't know. On the first day, first day, its light decreases a 14th part. On the second day, it creases a 13th part. On the third day, a 12th part. On the fourth day, an 11th part. On the fifth day, a 10th part. On the sixth day, a 9th part. On the seventh day, it creases an 8th part. On the eighth day, it decreases a 7th part. On the ninth day, it creases a 6th part. On the 10th day, it decreases a 15th part. Mine says five. I was just kidding. I've seen if he was listening. This is the same stuff. <laughs> no, a fifth part. And on the 11th day, it decreases a fourth part. On the 12th day, it decreases a third part. On the 13th day, it decreases a second part. On the 14th day, it decreases a half of its seventh part. Okay, so there's that 14th day. It decreases a half, only a half. All these other ones, it decreases different. So there's the day 14. And on its, of its seventh part, and on the 15th day, the whole remainder of its light is consumed. Okay. Yeah, so it's completely gone. Yeah, there's no moon. You can't see anything. It's there, but it's not there. But that's what they call the new moon on the whatever calendar they but are. That's not, but, yeah, but that's, that's not, not moon, Yaw's no. calendar. No. Okay. On, on stated months, the moon has 29 days. It also has a period of 28 days. All right, what does that mean? So some months have 20, it goes in 28 days. Some days it's on 29 days. Okay. Mine mostly, did. mostly it's twenty nine days, but then there's also a couple that are twenty eight days. Mine did and once twenty eight days. Yeah, and once? and once. So yeah, so every only once a year it's twenty eight days. Huh. Okay. I wonder if that is that extra day or whatever it is that they were talking about that one time where there was extra days or something of the sort. Okay. Uriel likewise showed me another regulation: when light is poured into the moon, how it is poured into it from the sun. All the time that the moon is in progress with its light, it is poured in the presence of the sun until light is in 14 days completed in heaven. And when it is wholly extinguished, its light is consumed in heaven. And on the first day, it is called the new moon. For on that day, light is received into it. So, yeah, this is a, this is a killer for lunar keepers. Okay, so I'm going to start back on mine's 11. During all, the per during all the period during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun. During 14 days, her light is accomplished in the Shamaim, and when she is illuminated throughout, her light is accomplished full in the Shamaim. And on the first day, she is called the new moon. For that day, the light rises upon her. So, so that's our new moon when it's the little... Crescent. So what this reminds me of is it reminds me of when we, you guys were kids and you guys used to have stars on your, your ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. You could hold the light onto that. So if you would hold the light only to like an edge of that and you would have turned the light off, you would have had just that edge of that little uh, glow in the dark thing going. And so every day, it basically, it, it sucks in more light somehow. So I want to just make one comment. We had one person on the comments before tell us that the full moon was the new moon and they even referenced Enoch. So I think that they misread that. 
and thinking that the 14th day was the new moon, but it actually tells you in verse 12 on mine that the first day is when the light rises upon her, when it's just beginning to rise upon her. That's when the new moon is, not the full moon. Mm -hmm. hey, hey. Oh. Sorry, we have a dog stuck. All right, sorry folks, we just had a dog incident and um, that's how fast it goes and so I guess we're not gonna edit this out, but um, that is a dog getting stuck in a chair when he was trying to get up and all the entire pack about killed him. So um, yeah, we had to jump into action. So sorry about that. Now, is everyone still good? Yeah. Yes. All right, where are we at? Talking about the new moon and the full moon. All right, and you were on a com you were on a thought, right? You were saying something. I was that? saying that one guy had said that. Oh, right. The the new moon or the full moon was the new month. Yeah, and, that, and that's when his days his new month started. We're on the fourteenth on the full moon, which that is not what this says. Yeah, and so let's reread that here real quick. And and it says, and when it is wholly extinguished, its light is consumed in the heaven, and on the first day it is called the new moon. For on that day, light is received into it. I think it's, it, it's vital that we um, understand that part right there. That's, that's very important here. Maybe I'll even highlight this thing because that's very important. All right, 15. It becomes precisely completed on the day that the sun descends into the west while the moon ascends at night from the east. Okay, so this is a little bit different though because it said before, it said the moon rises with the sun. What does this say here? It becomes precisely completed on the day that the sun descends into the west while the moon ascends at night from the east. So I don't know what that's saying. So yeah. mine says she becomes full moon exactly on the day when the sun goes down in the west and from the east she rises at night and the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her and the moon is seen over against the sun. So I think when we can see the sun during the day, I think this yeah, we can see the sun during the day, but I mean, it doesn't, the other book, the, the other scriptures here in Enoch, it says that the moon rises with the sun. So I don't know what to make of that exactly. You guys remember that? Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's see. The moon then shines all the night until the sun rises before it. When the moon disappears in turn before the sun, where light comes to the moon, there again it decreases until all its light is extinguished and the days of the moon pass away. Then its orb remains solitary without light. During three months, it, af it's, it affects in 30 days its period. And during three months, it affects it in 29 days each, in which it affects its decrease in its first period and in the first gate in 177 days. It right. says 177? 177. Mine says 127. 177 or 27. That's Mine all. Mine says 177. 77. Wow, your WordPress, the guy at the WordPress site must have got this one wrong. So, that to me, I think it's the seasons. Okay, is that what we're saying here? I don't know. That's the way that I just took that, was it seasons, because it's for three months. So your seasons, like, are usually... Yeah, so, so three months, it says it has 30 days in the period. Mm-hmm. And during three months, it affects is in 29 days each, in which it affects its decrease in the first period. All right, um, maybe that's... Maybe that's seasons. I don't know. I don't know. That was just my thought. All right. And at the time of its going forth during three months, it appears 30 days each. And during three months, it appears 29 days each. Okay. In the night, it appears for 20 as a man and in the day as heaven, for it is nothing else except its light. All right. What in the world does it say? Mine says, by night for 20 days each time, it looks like a man and by day like heaven. For there is nothing else in it except its light. All right, well, I, I hate to say that we probably didn't land on the moon. I mean, I, I, I think everyone's figured that out by now. But it says right here that there's nothing there except a light. I have this highlighted for some reason. I must have looked this up many moons ago or something. My, <laughs> mine says at ago. night she appears like a man for 20 days each time. And by day she appears like the Shamayim. And there is none else in her Save so you can, you can see it during the day, but at night you can't see it? I mean, is that what it's saying? I don't know. You mean it appears like a man? Uh, I don't know, because when it appears as in heaven or something, you can't see heaven. We can't see heaven, but we can see men. Is my only thought. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Um, and, oh, anyone? maybe. Maybe what? 
I was thinking like how oh, it's a sliver, sorry. Like when it's a new when it's the no moon, but mm -hmm. that's only for a night. It's not for nine days. Because yeah. it says twenty days each time, so I don't know. I'm sure we could research this and figure this out a little more. Possibly. Okay, let's go on. Seventy nine. And now, my son Methuselah, I have shown you everything, and every ordinance of the stars of heaven is finished. He showed me every ordinance respecting these, which is at all times and in all seasons under every influence, in all years, at the arrival and under the rule of each, during every month and every week, also the decrease of the moon, which is affected in the sixth gate, for in that sixth gate is its light consumed. Oh, okay. Well, that's how you lose moonlight when it hits in the sixth gate. It says... Uh, the light's consumed. Anyone else have anything different? No. Okay. Eli, I want you to get up here. Mine says her light is accomplished. Okay. From this is the beginning of the month, and its decrease is affected in the sixth gate in this period until 177 days are completed, according to the mode of calculation by weeks, 25 and 2 days. It is less than that of the sun, according to the ordinance of the stars, by 5 days in one time precisely. When that visible situation is completed, such is the appearance and likeness of every luminary which Uriel, the great angel who conducts them, showed to me. All right, anyone have anything different than that? Just that the last thing it says, such is the picture and sketch of every luminary which Uriel, the archangel, who is their leader, showed unto me. Every sketch of every what? Every, every picture and every sketch to the luminary, to every luminary. Huh. Okay, is that what you're saying? All right, I don't know. Let's continue on. 80. In those days, Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have showed you all things, O Canuck, all and all things have I revealed to you. You see the sun, the moon, and those which conduct the stars of heaven, which cause all their operations, seasons, and arrivals to return. In the days of sinners, the years shall be shortened. Their seed shall be backward in their prolific soil, and everything done on earth shall be subverted and disappear in its season. The rain shall be restrained, and heaven shall stand still. In those days the fruits of the earth shall be late, and not flourish in their season, and in their season the fruits of the trees shall be withheld. Okay, so this just tells us about end time. This is like an end time prophecy thing right here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just says at the end times that, you know, I, I don't know about you, but it seems to me there's a man-made famine on this earth that is that is happening right now, but there is also, Yah is having his hand in this as well. And so they are completely orchestrating a famine. But I do know there are droughts all over the world and the rivers are drying up everywhere. And so it looks like we are here, my friends. Can I read this real quick? Please do. And in the days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened and their seed shall be late and their lands and fields and all the earth shall alter and shall not appear in that in their time, and the rain shall be kept back, and the Shamayim shall withhold. So, the day shortened. Didn't they say, like, we lost, like, milliseconds or something? On is, the, I know, that's sheep I know, food. That is I know, sheep but food. I'm just thinking the days are, are being shortened. Yeah, we're not spinning around anything. I know we're not. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't trust anything that they're saying, but I don't know what about it means days shortened. I mean, if the days are going to be shortened, it would have to be Yah hands doing it, right? Right. He would... He would he would send stuff through other gates. Like if you went from gate uh, four and you immediately went into like gate one or something or gate five, six or, so, or something else than what you're going to, right. time would completely be shortened and, right. or change or go longer. And we, we would have zero control over that. And so, all right, let's see. So the days of the days, the fruits of the earth shall be late. We're here right now. Okay, six. The moon shall change its laws and not be seen at its proper period. But in those days shall heaven be seen, and bareness shall take place in the borders of the great chariots in the west. It shall shine more than the orders of light, while many chiefs among the stars of authority shall err, perverting their ways and works. All right, this is deep. This is getting real deep, folks. So the moon shall change its laws. That is bad news. That's a bad thing. I mean, if it's, if it's changing its laws, we may lose the moon in, in, in the future or something. Mine says, and the moon shall alter her order and not appear at her time. Well, that's bad news. And in those days, the sun, the sun shall be seen, and he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west and shall shine more brightly than accordance with the order of light. So this is y'all sw flipping gates, right? Yeah, this so is it's like reversed. Yeah, so like when, when times are up or something of the sort, or if he wants a super drought, then he'll have Thomas, the son, 
um, shine back. less. Yeah, shine less or something. Or shine at night. Or shine at night and have a real short and days. And during the day. That'd be weird. Wow. All right. Those shall not appear in their season who command them. Hold on. Did I get the last one? Yeah, it is. Okay, sorry. Seven again. Those shall not appear in their season who commanded them and all the classes of the stars shall be shut up against sinners. The thoughts of those who dwell on the earth shall transgress within them and they shall be perverted in all their ways. And again, I think we're here. They shall transgress and think themselves Elohim while evil shall be multiplied among them. Ah, we're here, folks. I don't know what else to say. This is definitely pointing to the days we're in. And punishment shall come upon them so that all of them shall be destroyed. So mine says like way different than yours. All right, let's read it. And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order, and these shall alter their orbits and tasks, and not appear at their seasons prescribed to them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on earth shall err concerning them, and they shall be altered from their from all their ways. Also they shall go astray and take them to be mighty ones, and evil shall be multiplied upon them, and punishment shall come upon them, so all is destroyed. So people are worshiping the stars. Or something of the sort. Now, this is this is so. This is an end time sign. When we see these things coming, when we see the sun disappear and the moon riding differently and the stars and all of this, this is the will of Yah. This is not man made. So they're going to spin something like uh, NASA's going to come out and say, "Oh, the Earth's spinning faster, and so we have more light now. That must be it." Okay. Less so, light. <laughs> yeah, the less light now because we're spinning faster. You must believe it. Okay. So here we go. All right, let's go to chapter 81. He said, O Canuck, look on the sephir of the tablets of heaven, which have gradually dropped down, and reading that which is written in it, understand every part of it. Then I looked on all which was written and understood, understood all, reading the sephir and everything written on it, all the works of man. And all the children of flesh upon the earth during the generations of the world, immediately after I blessed Yahuwah, the king of glory, who has thus forever formed the whole workmanship of the world. And I glorified Yahuwah on account of his long suffering and blessing towards the children of the world. At that time, I said, blessed is the man who shall die righteous and good against whom no catalog of crime has been written and with whom iniquity is not found. Okay, so there's, there's something, uh, if you guys want a blessing, right? If you guys want your own blessing, Enoch blessed you, but you can only partake of this blessing if you're righteous and good, right? Blessed is the man who shall do, die righteous and good against whom no catalog of crime has been written. How do you, ha how do you catalog crime, Cade? What would you, how, would you, how would you decipher what crime is? Well, it would be their sins. It would be that their sins would be written down. Well, how would you decipher? How would you transgressions know? Transgressions of the Torah. Yeah, transgressions of the Torah, exactly. That is how we know what crime is. Are you transgressing the Torah? Are you in the Torah or not? Okay. Um... I'm on five, but I don't right. know where you're at. I think I'm on seven. Then those three holy ones caused me to approach and placed me on the earth before the door of my house. And they said unto me, explain everything to Methuselah, your son, and inform all your children that no flesh shall be justified before Yahuwah, for he is their creator. Mine says in those seven Kadeshim brought me. So this one has three. Mine says three. Mine three. says seven. Seven. Wow. Somebody has this wrong. Okay, so um, I and who would the seven condition be? We know probably the angels: Uriel, Uriel, Raphael, Rethi Michael, Pinuel. Pinuel. I think there's only four of those ones. No, I think there were a total of eight. Was there? Okay. All right. Um, so that that sounds really bad, right there, right? It's uh, inform all your children that no flesh shall be justified before Yahuwah. Um, how 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 do we how do we explain this? How do we I mean, how do we, how do we as, as followers of Yah, how do we justify us to our creator? We don't. We, we well, don't I mean, we're going to, we're going to, we will just, we sins. will justify ourselves by our actions, right? Actions speak louder than words. You can either say, hey, you know, I, I believed all you said, but you walked a lie or you can um, be walking the truth and, you know, you won't, you won't die, you know, doing evil stuff. All right. Verse nine. During one year, we shall leave you with your children until you shall again recover your strength that you may instruct your family. Write these things and explain them all to all your children. But in another year, they shall take you from the midst of them and your heart shall be strengthened for the elect shall point out righteousness to the elect. The righteousness with the righteous shall rejoice, congratulating each other, but the sinners with sinners shall die. All right. Um, 
whatever day that is, it sounds like a good day for the righteous and probably a bad day for the sinners. Anyone have anything different? Mm -mm, not really. All right. Ten. And the perverted with the perverted shall be drowned. Those likewise who act righteously shall die on account of the works of man and shall be gathered together on account of the works of the wicked. In those days, they finish conversing with me and a return to my fellow men. Blessing Yahuwah of worlds. Mine doesn't say that they shall drown. What's your say? Mine just says, and backsliders go down with backsliders. Mine says, but the sinner will die with the sinner, and the apostate will sing with the apostate. Yeah, we're going to down with the apostate. Okay, so apostate, what's it, Kate? It says, but the sinner shall die with the sinners, and the apostate shall go down with the apostate. Okay. But you're so, said drowning. Yeah, I guess Stephen Pigeon thought they'd drown. So <laughs> going down, I mean, probably drown. <laughs> eh, let's throw some drowning in there. All right. 82. Now, my son Methuselah, all these things I speak unto you and write for you. To you I have revealed all and have given you Sephirim of everything. Preserve my son Methuselah, the Sephirim written by your father, that you may reveal them to future generations. Now, Enoch was, it was Enoch, how, what was the, the lineage again? Enoch, Methuselah, Noah. Okay. No, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah. Lamech, Noah, right. All right. All right. And wisdom have I given you to your children and your posterity that they may reveal to your, their children for generations forever this wisdom in their thoughts and that those who comprehend may not slumber but hear with their ears that they may learn this wisdom and be deemed worthy of eating wholesome food. Okay, does yours guys say wholesome food? And it no. should please those that eat thereof better than good food. And it's better for those who eat from it than good food. It's interesting, worthy food. Way back in the day, they actually had worthy food. Like, they, they knew about, like, bad food. I mean, we live in a generation right now where you can't eat a bag of M&Ms because you'll have Red 4, Red 40, Yellow 5. You basically get dumber with every piece of M&M that you eat, literally. The science behind that is that um, you literally become stupid by eating all of these, these bad colored dyes in all of this food. All right, here we go. Blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are all who walk in righteousness, in whom is no crime, as in sinners, when all their days are numbered. With respect to the progress of the sun in heaven, it enters and goes out of gate for 30 days. With the leaders of the thousand classes of stars, with four which are added and appertain to the four quarters of the year, which conduct them and accompany them at four periods. All right, what are we saying here? So we're we saying that the, the the sun leaves heaven and enters into the and his doors. He leaves for thirty days and then comes back in his thing for thirty days. So it says there's leaders of the thousands of classics. So I wonder how many people wonder how what angel, how many stars does the uh, angels lead? You know how many how much would there be? I mean there's there's a lot of stars up there. Mine says heads of thousands of the order of the stars. Heads of thousands. Yeah, the stars. There's definitely thousands of those suckers. All right. Respecting these, men greatly err and do not calculate them in the calculation of every age. For they greatly err respecting them. Nor do men know accurately that they are in the calculation of the year. But indeed, these are marked down forever. One in the first gate, one in the third, one in the fourth, and one in the sixth. Anyone have anything different? Not really, but it says, For they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded forever. One in the first portal, one in the third portal, one in the fourth, and one in the sixth. And the year is completed in 364 days. All right, so 364 days. I, I don't have a lot of explanation for this. Uh, it's not like the, the Torah stuff where you could actually get down with it and try to explain this. This is a little deeper than that. All right, truly has been stated and accurately has been calculated that which is marked down for the luminaries, the months, the fixed periods, the years, and the days, Uriel has explained to me and communicated to me whom Yahuwah of all creation on my account commanded according to the might of heaven and the power which it possesses both by day and by night to explain light to man of the sun, moon, and stars and of all the powers of heaven which are turned with their respective orbs. So mine says, and an account thereof is accurate and recorded reckoning thereof exact for the lights and the months and the festivals. Festivals, right. That would be right. And the years and the days. Right. But that, yours didn't say. No, it didn't say anything about festivals. Mine says feasts. Feasts. All right. Where's your say? Say festivals at? Uh, but the, when it's talking about the account thereof, an accurate and a record, right. record reckoning, therefore exact. Right before Uriel. 
Yeah, so it's it's only the says fixed period. Yep, for for luminaries, the months, the fixed periods, the years and the days. This is crazy translations. All right. This is the ordinance of the stars, which set in their places, in their seasons, in their periods, in their days, and in their months. These are the names of those who conduct them, who watch and enter in their seasons according to their ordinance, in their periods, in their months, in their influence, and in their stations. Eli, what'd you have? I, say, uh -huh. uh, I thought you were like, uh, no. motion. I do. what do you got? And these are the orders of the stars, which they go down in their places and in the appointed times and festivals and months. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times, in their orders, in their seasons, in their months, and in their periods of dominion, and in their positions. My guess is if they don't make it to their right time, then they end up in a uh, prison, a star prison. Right, so this is these are these are leading. They they obviously have a, a uh, option of obeying or not obeying. So very interesting. The these leaders of a thousand are in the midst of their conductors, and the conductors are added each behind his station, and their conductors make the separation. These are the names of the conductors who separate the four quarters of the year who are appointed Melk Melkel Helamekel Helamekel Melek Helamelek. Okay. Me Meliel and Nariel. Okay. What do you guys so have? So we have an issue. What you got? Because yours skipped two verses. Did it? On mine. Okay. What do, you, what do you got then? There are four leaders who divide the four parts of the year into first. And after them, the 12 leaders of the orders who divide the months. And for the 360, there are heads over thousands who divide the days. And for the four interclary days, there are leaders which divide the four parts of the year. And these are the heads over thousands are interclade between leader and leader, which behind the station, but their leaders make the division. And these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year, which are ordained, Mikiel, Amalek, and Meliakel, and Nerol. So the only thing different from yours and mine is where yours says 360. Mm -hmm. Mine says 364 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it gets even weirder because I know there's no J's in Hebrew, so I'm not sure where these next names come up at. And the names of those who conduct them are Adnar L, Jesus L, and Jalalium. Mine has it with a Y and then an E. Yeah, Stephen Pigeon. You know there's no J's in Mine Hebrew. Mine starts with an I. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know what Doc Pigeon's got going on here. Some issues. Okay, so I don't know who these are, but it, basically this is the band. If you're looking at a band, right, you're looking at the conductors and you're looking... These are two sets of leaders, two, two different sets of leaders that are doing two separate things. Interesting. These are the three who follow after the conductors of the classes, each following after the three conductors of the classes, which themselves follow after those conductors of the stations who divide the four quarters of the year. In the first part of the year rises and rules Melchius, whose name is Tamani, and Zaihai, the southern sun. Huh. Wow, mine does not say and This that. is in parentheses, so this is Doc Pigeon telling us it's the southern sun, so I don't know okay. what that is. In the beginning of the year, Miliakul, I don't know if that's right or not, raises his first and rules, who is named Tamini, Tamani, and Shishmi, and all the days of his dominion, while list, he bears rule, are 91 days. Mine says, in the beginning of the year, Melchiel rises first and rules, who is called the southern sun, and all the days of his period during which he rules are 91. All right, I don't, I guess this is in the first days they name him something different. I think this is talking about the sun again, but this is pretty uh, confusing. All right, um, 17 on mine. All the days of his influence, which he rules, are 91 days, and these are the signs of the days which are seen upon the earth. In the days of his influence, perspiration, heat, and trouble. All the trees become fruitful. The leaf of every tree comes forth. The grain is reaped. The rose and every species of flowers blossoms in the field, and the trees of winter are dried up. So this is seasons. Yeah, this is seasons. So they named a season, like season one or whatever the one season is. This one that is, uh, what, summer? So Maybe this would spring? be spring. Spring? All right. Because that's when our year begins, in the beginning. Is in the springtime when the barley's ready to go and everything. Says the grain is reaped, though. I mean, that would seem like it would see in the summer, unless it's like winter wheat. I guess it could be, and because they could have, it could be in the spring, I suppose. But it says, and the trees bear fruit, and the leaves are produced, and all the trees, and the harvest of wheat. So that's got to be that's got to be the end of summer, because we don't have trees. No. We don't have you won't have an apple tree until the end of summer. You won't have. Well, that's apples. Well, 
I mean, what about everything else? The, nothing. The, nothing the is apples in the, are in the fall. Yeah, but nothing. What fruit tree is in the winter? None. What? None. Right. But what about in the spring? <laughs> uh, what fruit trees do you have in the spring? I think your blueberries. Oranges? No, blueberries isn't a tree. It's a bush. It still grows like a tree. It's a bush. It it's a like shrub. A <laughs> All right. Here we are. 19. These are the names of the conductors who under who are under them. Barkel, Zelzabal. Wait a minute. You got to go back. Did I miss something? Because No, but it says, but the trees of the winter season become withered. So we are in spring. Hold on. All right. Hold on. I guess we have a wife check here. All right. All the trees beca become fruitful. Okay. The leaf of every tree comes forth. The grain is reaped. The harvest of the wheat. The rose and every species of flower blossoms in the field. Uh-huh, but the, and the trees, trees of, of winter, winter are dried season up. season become withered. Uh, so it's not, so it's, we just passed winter. Tree? What do you mean? How is this even possible? The grain, possibly, I can see that, because there is winter grain. What about roses? Do you have roses in the spring? Yes. You do? Yes. So maybe your bushes are right. Maybe you're right with the bushes. I okay. All right. Here we go, 19. These are the names of the conductors who are under them. Barkel, Zelzabel, and another additional conductor of a thousand is named Helioyelef. The days of those influence have been completed. The other conductor next after them is Hel Helamelech. Mine's like a C. Helamelech? Helamelech. Whose name they call the Splendid Zihai. Mine's the Shining Sun. The yeah. names of the Shining Sun. Okay. All the days of his light are 91 days. I think Thomas has a bunch of different, uh, when he's angrier, like when the, when Thomas is hot and angrier, he's, he's called another name. Uh, he's bipolar too. Yeah, he's hey, an angry son. This Multiple one's personalities. Summer. All right, this one's summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are the signs of the days upon, the, upon earth. Heat and drought, while the trees bring forth their fruits, warmed and concocted, and give their fruits to dry. The flocks fellow, mate and bear young, all the fruits of the earth are collected, with everything in the fields, and the vines are trodden. This takes place during the time of his influence. These are their names and orders, and the conductors who are under them. Of those who are chiefs of a thousand, Geriel, Kiel, Hiel. And the name of the additional leader of a thousand is Asaphael. The days of his influence have been completed. All right, anyone have anything else? No. All right, this is extremely confusing. All right. And now I have shown you, my son, Methuselah, every sight which I saw prior to your birth. Mine says dreams, by the way. Uh, this is beginning every dreams. Sight? No, this whole thing that we're oh. reading now is dreams. This section is called dreams. Yes. Okay. I will relate another vision, which I saw before I was married. They resemble each other. The first was when I was learning a sephir, and the other before I, married to, I was married to your mother. I saw a potent vision. And on one account of these things, besought Yahuwah. I was lying down in the house of my grandfather, Malelo. I saw in a vision heaven thrown down and removed. And when it fell upon the earth, I saw likewise the earth absorbed by a great abyss and mountains suspended over mountains. Hills were sinking upon hills. Lofty trees were gliding off of their trunks and were in the act of being projected and of sinking into the abyss. And at these things, the word fell down in my mouth. I cried out and said, the earth is destroyed. Then my grandfather Malelo raised me up and said to me, Why do you thus cry out, my son, and wherefore thus do you lament? I related to him the whole vision which I had seen. He said to me, Confirmed is that which you have seen, my son, and potent the vision of your dream respecting every secret sin of the earth. Its substance shall sink into the abyss, and a great destruction take place. All right, now where did we hear about this before that we didn't make any sense? You guys don't remember Anyone? No. Anyone with me? Eli, you still awake? Yep. Come back to me, son. I'm here. Okay. No, remember when it said the mountains uh, would skip like goats? And the mountains, the hills, and everything, it would be just like completely whacked. And, um, we were when just... Yeshua was raining on yeah. the mountains, and all the mountains went so, away. It seems like at some point the earth is going to be destroyed. It doesn't sound good at all. Now, my son, rise up and beseech Yahuwah of glory, for you are faithful, that a remnant may be left upon earth, and that he would not wholly destroy it. My son... All this calamity upon earth comes down from heaven. Upon earth shall there be a great destruction. We just we just add the sound effects just to, for <laughs> excellence. Calamity on my roof. Yes, calamity on our roof. Then I arose, prayed, and entreated, and wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world, explaining everything to my son Methuselah. When I went down below and looking up to heaven, beheld the sun proceeding from the east, the moon descending to the west, a few stars, and everything which Elohim has known from the beginning. 
I blessed Yahuwah of judgment and magnified him because he has sent forth the sun from the windows of the east that ascending and rising in the face of the heaven, it might spring up and pursue the path which has been pointed out to it. Anything else different? Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue on. We're making good progress. I told you to eat before this, kid. You should have eaten before we got into this. We're, we're, run, we're running for the hills now. All right. I lifted up my hands in righteousness and blessed the holy and the great one. I spoke with the breath of my mouth and with a tongue of flesh, which Elohim has formed for all the sons of mortal men, that with it they may speak, giving them breath, a mouth, and a tongue to converse with. Blessed are you, O Yahuwah, the king, great and powerful in your greatness. Yahuwah of all the creatures of heaven, king of kings, Elohim of the whole world, whose reign, whose kingdom, and whose majesty endure forever and ever. From generation to generation shall your dominion exist. All the heavens are your throne forever, and all the foot, your footstool forever and ever. Now, who said that? Who said that? Who's repeating this? Isn't it David? Yeah, this is what David says. My enemies will be a footstool. The earth, it talks about the earth being a footstool. And again, it doesn't make any sense with the whole lies of round earth spinning around. It's just garbage. All right. For you have made them, and over all you reign. No act whatsoever exceeds your power. With your wisdom is unchangeable. Nor from your throne and from your presence is it ever averted. You know all things, see and hear them, nor is anything concealed from you, for you perceive all things. The angels of your heavens have transgressed, and on mortal flesh shall your wrath remain until the day of the great judgment. Now then, O Elohim, Yahuwah, and mighty King, I entreat you and beseech you to grant my prayer, that a posterity may be left to me on earth, and that all mankind may not perish, that the earth may not be left destitute and destruction take place forever. O Adonai, let the race perish from off the earth which has offended you, but a righteous and upright race established for the plant of a seed forever. Hide not your face, O Yahuwah, from the prayer of your servant. Anything different? No, nope. no. Nope. All right, now we're getting easy reading. Um, that's the end of mine. That's the end of yours? Well, it's getting even easier. We still got a ways on this one. Just read this one. Okay. After this, I saw another dream and explained it to all of you, my son. Kanako rose and said to his son, Methuselah, to you, my son, will I speak. Hear my word and incline your ear to the visionary dream of your father. Before I married your mother, Edna, I saw a vision on my bed. And behold, a cow sprung forth from the earth, and this cow was white. Afterwards, a female heifer sprung forth, and with it another heifer. The one was black, and one was red. The black heifer then struck the red one and pursued it over all the earth. From that period, I could see nothing more of the red heifer. But the black one increased in bulk, and a female heifer came with him. After this, I saw that many cows proceeded forth, resembling him, and following after him. The first female, young one, also went in the presence of the first cow and sought the red heifer, but found him not. And she lamented with a great lamentation while she was seeking him. Then I looked until the first cow came to her, from which time she became silent and ceased to lament. Afterwards, she calved another white cow, and again calved many cows and black heifers. In my sleep also I perceived a white bull, which in like manner grew and became a large white bull. After him, many white cows came forth resembling him, and they began to calve many white cows, which resembled them and followed them in order. All right, he's, he's, uh, he's seeing a he's, uh, farm. He's seeing our farm. He's no, a rancher. <laughs> yeah, he's a rancher. All right. So I mine says that the black bull gored the red one. At the very beginning of that story. I wonder if this has anything to do with the red heifer of, Levit of Numbers. Anything about it. I don't, I don't know. know. Again, we're in 86. Again, I looked attentively while sleeping and surveyed heaven above. And behold, a single star fell from heaven, which being raised up, ate and fed among those cows. After that, I perceived other large and black cows. And behold, all of them changed their stalls and pastures while their young began to lament one with another. Again, I looked in my vision and surveyed heaven when, behold, I saw many stars which descended and projected themselves from heaven to where was the first star. In the, into the midst of those young ones, while the cows were with them, feeding in the midst of them, I looked at and observed them when, behold, they all acted after the manner of horses and began to approach the young cows, all of whom became pregnant and brought forth elephants, camels, and donkeys." All right, what do you guys have? Is that so mine up here a little bit says, And again I saw the vision and looked towards the Shamayim and see. I saw many stars descend and cast themselves down from the Shamayim to the first star, and they became bulls amongst those cattle and pastured with them amongst them. 
Okay. That's so, it. but yours didn't say that they became bulls. Uh, no, I didn't say that. And I looked at them and saw and see that they let out the members like the horses and began to cover the cows of the oxen. And they all became pregnant and brought forth elephants, camels, and donkeys. Yeah, okay. Um, so we have donkeys and elephants and camels. So the stars became cows and then they all became different animals. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, keep on. At these, all the cows were alarmed and terrified while they began biting with their teeth, swallowing and striking with their horns. They began also to devour the cows, and behold, all the children of the earth trembled, shook with terror at them, and suddenly fled away. All right, that's the end of my chapter. Mm -hmm. All right, 87. Again I perceived them when they began to strike and to swallow each other, and the earth cried out. Then I raised my eyes a second time towards heaven and saw in a vision that, behold, there came forth from heaven, as it were, the likeness of white men. One came forth from thence, and three with him. Huh. I wonder why it says white men. What would that have to do with anything? Did you guys say white men? Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, what other color would we be? I mean, we're talking like brown men or yellow men or something of the sort? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Those three who came forth last seized me by my hand and raising me up from the generations of the earth, elevated me to a high station. Then they showed me a lofty tower on the earth while every hill became diminished. And they said, remain here until you perceive what shall come upon those elephants, camels, and donkeys, and upon the stars, and upon all the cows. Yes, it doesn't say donkeys. Okay, then I looked at th that one of the four who came forth first. He seized the first star which fell down from heaven. So is this a cow or something? Or what, what, I, think I think so. they're relating to the angels. I think this is what he's talking about. The angels mating with men and women. Is it because that's what I was wondering? Why did they have like donkeys and stuff? I mean, and that's that would what be... I was wondering about the elephants because the elephants were bigger. Well, here it than says all the other ones. before they like uh, impregnated the uh, cows, and I think this is the stars that came down from heaven and became humans. So if there was such a thing as dinosaurs, which I don't even know if there were, I think that's still a myth, a hoax we had. If there were dinosaurs, I think it was because the fallen angel things had been mating with the women, and eventually they they had it said they, they violated the, the animals as well. So I think they brought forth all sorts of great evil. All right, that's just a thought. I have no idea if that's real. Okay, then I looked at that one of the four who came forth first. He seized the first star which fell down from heaven, and binding it hand and foot, he cast it into a valley, a valley deep, very narrow, deep, stupendous, and gloomy. Okay, so we know the story. Yep. Mm -hmm. Who is this? Aziel. Aziel, yeah. Then or one, Azel. yeah, Azazel. Then one of them drew his sword and gave it to the elephants, camels, and donkeys who began to strike each other, and the whole earth shook on account of them. Yep. So okay, this so is this hasn't name. this didn't this is just about to happen to them, mm -hmm. right? Because this is this is not for us. I mean, this is this is back in the days. This is what already happened. And when I looked into the vision, behold, one of those four angels who came forth hurled from heaven, collected together and took all the great stars whose form partly resembles that of horses and binding them all hand and foot, cast them into the cavities of the earth. The abyss of the earth. Okay, so I think this has come and gone for yep. us. But for them, this was going to be in the future, right? So this is, this is future for them, mm -hmm. past for us. All right. Then one of those four went into the white cows and taught them a mystery. While the cow was trembling, it was born and became a man and fabricated for himself a large ship. In this he dwelt, and three cows dwelt with him in that ship, which covered them. Um, Yah's dreams are a little weird sometimes, you know, because we know this story as well, right? Mm -hmm. We know about the ship. We know the, the three cows that dwelled with him, but it was his sons. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Noah's sons. This, this is who we're talking about. If you guys haven't figured this out, he's, he's basically speaking about Noah. And so Noah hasn't been, even been born yet, I don't think. Mm -mm. Again, I lifted up my eyes towards heaven and saw a lofty roof. Above it were seven cataracts, which poured forth on a certain village much water. Okay, so we know this story as well, right? So we know that heaven opened up, and so the, the fountains of the deep opened up, and as well as the fountains of the Shamaim, and dumped water. Again, I looked, and behold, there were fountains open on the earth in that large village. The water began to boil up and rose over the earth so that the village was not seen, while its whole soil was covered with water. Much water was over it, darkness and clouds. Then I surveyed the height of this water, and it was elevated above the village. It flowed over the village and stood higher than the earth. Then all the cows which were collected there while I looked on them were drowned, swallowed up, and destroyed by the water. But the ship, the, but the ship floated above it, 
All the cows, the elephants, the camels, and the donkeys were drowned on the earth and all cattle. Nor could I perceive them. Neither were they able to get out, but perished and sunk into the deep. Again, I looked in the vision until those cataracts from the lofty roof were removed and the fountains of the earth became equalized while other depths were opened. Again, this destroys the, the round earth, this entire round earth stuff. I mean, it basically says there's a drain on our earth that basically sucked all the water in as well as pushed all the water out. Okay, verse 10. Into which the water began to descend until the dry ground appeared. The ship remained on the earth. The darkness receded and it became light. Then the white cow, which became a man, went out of the ship and the three cows with him. One of the three cows was white, resembling that cow. One of them was red as blood and one of them was black. All the white cows left them. And the white cows left them. Okay, um, I think this is talking about probably how the giants came to earth, right? How did we end up with giants after the flood? Mm -hmm. So one of the cow was red as blood. I, I don't... I don't know if that's a good deal at all. I don't know. So of his three kids. So I'm guessing the red blood's probably uh, Ham. 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 Black was probably Japheth and white was probably Shem. Yeah, that's probably Shem. All right, that's probably a good guess. I don't know. Then began wild beasts and birds to bring forth. Of all these, the different kinds assembled together, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, wild boars, foxes, rabbits, and the hanzer. The siset, the avist, the kites, the funkas, and ravens. Then the white cow was born in the midst of them. Did you guys say funkus? <laughs> no. P H funkus. No. Well, which one's that after? There's like a lot of names. Should I just like say all the? Yeah. What do you What do you have in yours? Lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, swine, falcons, vultures, kites, eagles, and, and ravens. Wait, where's your say swine at? Is, after what's after Mine rabbits? Mine says pigs. After rabbits? Yeah. Uh, mine doesn't squirrels. have rabbits. It would be squirrels, but I know it's just rabbits. Yours says squirrels. Uh -huh. Squirrels. So the hands are as a pig? Guess so. Okay, then it says the siset. Falcons. The avist. Vultures. Vultures. Kites. Kites. Funkas. Eagles. Eagles are funkas. And ravens. Oh, that's funky funkas. Wait, do you know if anything after funkas? The hams are the And king. ravens. Uh, funkas and, and ravens. <laughs> All right, Nicole, contain yourself, please. All right, then the white cow was born in the midst of them. And they began to bite each other when the white cow was born in the midst of them, brought forth a wild donkey and a wild cow at the same time and many wild donkeys. And it doesn't say donkeys, folks. So then the white cow, which was born, brought forth a black wild sow and a white sheep. Okay, a black wild sow is a pig. Uh-huh. Okay. Wild boar. This is yours, right? Wow, what's going on here? So this is like the destruction of the human DNA again or something. Yeah. Right? Maybe so, pigs. this was the white one. So, who was the bad kid of Noah's? Ham. He's the reason we have all the giants. And he's the yeah. one that departed from them, and he created all this again. He's the one looked at his dad naked and was laughing at him. Yep. Yeah. All right. Not so good. He Loser. broke commandments. Yeah. All right. That wild sow also brought forth many swine. All right. Did I miss something here? Oh, yeah. That, that, wild, that wild sow also brought forth many swine. Ooh, and that sheep brought forth 12 sheep. Okay, so the wild sow. So this is a bad thing, right? That wild sow, whoever the wild sow is, brought forth many swine, right? Mine says many boars. Right, it's a pig. That's right, a giant okay. giant pig. It's like a pig on steroids. Right. Okay, okay. so I think, that, I think we're is. now on the, I think we're now on like Joseph or something. What do you mean or Joseph? Yeah, uh, 12 tribes of Israel. What are you talking about? Read the next little part. Okay. Um... And uh, the sheep brought forth 12 sheep. Right, and the sheep brought forth 12 sheep. Okay. Who, when those 12 sheep grew up, they delivered one of them to the donkeys. That was Joseph, to, Joseph. The Israel, right. to the Egyptians. Right. Okay. Again, those donkeys delivered that sheep to the wolves, and he grew up in the midst of them. Then so Yah the wolves are the Mitzrayites. Yeah, Mitzrayan. and the uh, Ishmaelites are the uh, ones that... The, the sheep. Yeah, the donkeys. So when you guys have these crazy, crazy dreams, they're probably not as crazy as you think. There's probably something to them. I saw a bunch of cows, and they all got into the boat, and they all came out. <laughs> the sows, the pigs were born out of the cows. I, I didn't know what to think. I thought I ate bad pizza. All right. Um, where are we at here? I don't and know. And Adam and I brought the 11 sheep to live. That's where, where I'm at. So, uh, and he grew up the in the wolves. midst of them. The Yahuwah brought the 11 sheep that they, 24 in this one, they might dwell and feed with them in the midst of the wolves. They multiplied, and there was an abundance of pasture for them. 
But the wolves began to frighten and oppress them while they destroyed their young ones. Yeah, that's what the Mitzrayats did. They killed no, yeah, the babies. Yeah, so my thing, I found a different website because my last one out, and it has like different like um, names each chapter. The first one is the deluge and the deliverance of Noah, and this one's from the death of Noah to the Exodus. Oh, great. This is, that'd be nice to have here. Okay, that's good. Um, and they left their young in torrents of deep water. Now the sheep began to cry out on account of their young and fled for refuge to the Adonai, to their Adonai. One, however, which was saved, escaped and went away with the wild donkeys. I beheld the sheep moaning, crying and petitioning their Adonai with all their might until Yahuwah of the sheep descended at their voice from lofty habitation, went to them and inspected them. He called to that sheep, which had secretly stolen away from the wolves and told him to make the wolves understand that they were not to touch the sheep. That's talking about Noah. Moses. Or Moses. Sorry. Moses. Moses, yes. Okay. Then that sheep went to the wolves with the word of Yahuwah when another met him and proceeded with him. Is that Aaron? Both of them together entered the dwelling of the wolves yep. and conversing with them made them to understand that henceforward they were not to touch the sheep. Afterward, I perceived the wolves greatly prevailing over the sheep with their whole force. The sheep cried out and their Adonai came to them. He began to strike the wolves who commenced a grievous lamentation, but the sheep were silent. Nor from that time did they cry out. I then looked at them until they departed from the wolves. The eyes of the wolves were blind, who went out and followed them with all their might. But Yahuwah of the sheep proceeded with them and conducted them. Now, if you didn't know the story that we actually know, and this was in the future, and then this happened, this would blow your mind. It makes sense why he calls them lost sheep of Israel. Yeah, lost sheep of Israel, for sure. All right, all his sheep followed him. His countenance terrific and splendid and glorious was his aspect. Yet the wolves began to follow the sheep until they overtook them in a certain lake of water. Then that lake became divided and the water standing up on both sides before their face. And while their Adonai was conducting them, he placed himself between them and the wolves. The wolves, however, perceived not the sheep, but went into the midst of the lake, following them and running after them into the lake of water. But when they saw Yahuwah, the sheep, they turned to fly from before his face. I wonder if Yah showed himself right before he killed them all or something in that water mm -hmm. or did something. Then the water of the lake returned, and that, and that suddenly, according to its nature, it became full and was raised up until it's covered the wolves. And I saw that all of them which had followed the sheep perished and were drowned. So now when's the next section, Israel in the desert, they gave me the law and the entrance into Palestine. Nice. All right. But the sheep passed over this water, proceeding to a wilderness, which was without both water and grass. And they began to open their eyes and to see. Then I beheld Yahuwah, the sheep, inspecting them and giving them water and grass. The sheep was proceeding and conducting them. And when he had ascended the top of the lofty rock, Yahuwah the sheep sent him to them. Afterwards, I perceived their Adonai standing before them with an aspect terif, ter, teric, terrific and severe. Wow, aspect terrific and severe. His appearance was great and terrible and majestic. Sometimes I wonder if I've lost my reading ability. All right. And when they all, be, and when they all beheld him, they were frightened at his countenance. All of them were alarmed and trembled. They cried out after that sheep and to the other sheep who had been with him and who was in the midst of them saying, we are not able to stand before our Adonai or to look upon him. Then that sheep who conducted them went away and ascended the top of the rock. When the sheep began to grow blind and to wander from the path, which he hadn't shown them, but he knew it not. Their Adonai, however, was moved with great indignation against them. And when that sheep had learned, he descended from the top of the rock and cover, coming to them, found that there were many which had become blind. And he wandered from his path. As soon as they beheld him, they feared and trembled at his presence and became desirous of returning to their fold. Then that sheep, taking with him other sheep, went to those who had wandered and afterwards began to kill them. They were terrified at his countenance. Then he caused those which had wandered to return who went back to their fold. See, this is some of these that we understand. It's because it, is, it has come to pass. The ones we don't have any clue that it just seems really odd, it's because it hasn't come. Because, I mean, this makes complete sense. We know exactly the story in another version of it. All right, 60. I likewise saw there in the vision that this sheep became a man, built a house for Yahuwah of the sheep, and made them all stand in the house. I perceived also that the sheep which proceeded to meet this sheep, their conductor, died. I saw, too, that all the great sheep perished, while smaller ones rose up in their place, entered into a pasture, and approached a river of water. Then that sheep, their conductor, who became a man, was separated from them and died. All the sheep sought after him and cried for him with bitter lamentation. I saw likewise that they ceased to cry after that sheep and passed over the river of water. 
After that there arose other sheep, all of whom conducted them instead of those who were dead and who had conducted them. Then I saw that the sheep entered into a goodly place and a territory delectable and glorious. I, also, I saw also that they became satiated and that their house was in the midst of a del delectable territory and that sometimes their eyes were open and that sometimes they were blind until another sheep arose and conducted them. He brought them all back and their eyes were open. What do you got here? Mine's now in the new section from the time of Judges to the building of the temple. Okay. Then dogs, foxes, and wild boars began to devour them until another sheep arose. The Adonai of the flock, one of themselves, a ram to conduct them. This ram began to butt on every side those dogs, foxes, and wild boars until they all perished. With his eyes, he saw the ram in the midst of them who had laid aside his glory. Is this David? I think, I think so. I mean, who is, who's the one that came and beat up all these people? Then the dogs, and foxes, and wild boars began to devour them until another sheep arose. And so it had to be David. Samson? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, maybe. Um, with his eyes, he saw the, the ram in the midst of them who had laid aside his glory. And he began to strike the sheep, treading upon them and behaving himself without dignity. So that can't be him. They can't be David. So it's Samson. Then their Adonai sent a sheep to a still different sheep and raised him up to be a ram. And to, That's Saul. It was Saul. The first one was Saul. Uh, and this is David. Um, and raised him up to be a ram and to conduct them instead of the sheep who had laid aside his glory. Going therefore to him and conversing with him alone, he raised up that ram and made him a prince and leader of the flock, all the time that the dogs troubled the sheep. The first ram paid respect to this latter ram. Then the latter ram arose and fled away from before his face. And then I, and I saw that those dogs caused the first ram to fall. But the latter ram arose and conducted the smaller sheep. That ram likewise begat many sheep and died. Then there was a smaller sheep, a ram, instead of him, which became a prince and leader conducting the flock. I think this was a... Uh, Solomon. Uh, Solomon. And the sheep increased in size and multiplied. And all the dogs, foxes, and wild boars feared and fled away from him. That ram also struck and killed all the wild beasts, so they could not again prevail in the midst of the sheep, nor at any time ever snatch them away. And that house was made large and wide, a lofty tower being built upon it by the sheep for Yahuwah of the sheep. Yeah, this is definitely Shem, mm -hmm. uh, Psalm. Psalm. The house was low, but the tower was elevated and very high. Then Yahuwah of the sheep stood upon that tower and caused a full table to approach before him. Right, mine's in a new section. The two kings of Israel and Judah to the destruction of Jerusalem. Right. Again, I saw that those sheep wandered and went various ways, forsaking that their house... And that their Adonai called to some among them whom he sent to them. But these the sheep began to kill. And when one of them was saved from slaughter, he leaped and cried out against those who were desirous of killing him. But Yahuwah the sheep delivered him from their hands and made him ascend to them and remain with him. He sent also many others to them to testify and with lamentations to exclaim against them. And again I saw when some of them forsook the house of their Adonai in his tower, wandering all, all sides and growing blind. I saw that Yahuwah the sheep made a great slaughter among them in their pasture until they cried out to him in consequence of that slaughter. Then he departed from, that, from the place and left them in the power of lions, tigers, wolves, and the hyenas, and in the power of foxes and of every beast. And the wild beasts began to tear them. I saw too that he forsook the house of their fathers and their tower, giving them all into the power of lions to tear and to devour them into the power of every beast. So this is like any, it could be in any one of the kings. I mean, this could be, I mean, so, any, any one of them after Solomon. So I think the lions are Babylon. Hmm. All right. But he looked on in silence, rejoicing that they were devoured, swallowed up and carried off and leaving them in the power of every beast for food. He also called, he called also 70 shepherds and resigned to them the sheep that they might overlook them. Now, who's the 70 shepherds? Was there 70 kings of Israel in that time? I don't know. I don't know. There's 70 something. I mean, you know, we should probably know this. I don't know why we don't. Saying to them and to their associates, every one of you henceforward overlook the sheep and whatsoever I command you do and I will deliver them to you numbered. I will tell you which of them shall be slain. These destroy, and he delivered the sheep to them. Then he called to another and said, Understand and watch everything which the shepherds shall do to the sheep, these sheep, for many more of them shall perish than I have commanded. Of every excess, Eli, what do you have? 
Did they like go into exile seventy times? And maybe like each shepherd like one of the people who like exile. No, but them? they had seventy years. I mean, they had seventy years, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, on one of their their takings, in I think. All right. Um, of every excess and slaughter which the shepherd shall commit, there shall be an account as how how many may have perished by my command, and how many they may have destroyed of their own heads. Of all the destruction by each of the shepherds, there shall be an account. And according to the number, I will cause a recital to be made before me. How many they have destroyed of their own heads and how many they have delivered up to destruction that I may have a testimony against them, that I may know all their proceedings and that delivering to them, I may see what they do, they will do, whether they will act as I have commanded them or not. However, they shall be ignorant. Neither shall you make any explanation to them. Neither shall you reprove them. But there shall be an account of all the destruction done by them in their respective seasons. Then they began to kill and destroy more than it was commanded them. And they, and they left the sheep in the power of the lions, so that very many of them were devoured and swallowed up by lions and tigers and wild boars preyed upon them. That tower they burnt and overthrew that house. This has got to be like, I don't think we're to Messiah Yahushua yet, but I mean, this is like, um, they're burning the, they're burning the uh, temple, I think. Yeah. Then I grieved extremely on the account of the tower and because the house of the sheep was overthrown neither was i afterwards able to perceive whether they again entered that house the shepherds likewise and their associates associates delivered them to all the wild beasts that they might devour them each of them in his season uh each of them in the season according to his number was delivered up each of them one with another was described in a sephir how many of them one with another were destroyed in a sephir does anyone have any clue what's going on? Um, mine says, first period of the angelic rulers from the destruction of Jerusalem to the return from the captivity. Okay, so yeah, we were kind of on, on there. All right. More, however, than was ordered, everyone killed and destroyed. Then I began to weep and was greatly indigent on account of the sheep. In like manner also I saw in the vision him who wrote how he wrote down one destroyed by the shepherds every day. He ascended remained and exhibited each of his sephirim to Yahuwah of the sheep, all which they had done and all which each of them had made away with and all which they had delivered up to destruction. He took the sephir up to it, up in his hands, up in his hands, read it, sealed it and deposited it. What do you got, Eli? Now we're in the next thing, second period from the time of Cyrus to that of Alexander the Great. To Alexander the Great. Um, that is in when? That, I mean, that's... That's A.D. I'm pretty sure it's A.D. I think Alexander was like, what, 1200s, 1100s? Yeah, we'll look at that. All right, so, and after this, I saw shepherds overlooking the... For, okay. Um, he was from 336 B.C. 336 B.C.? Uh-huh. All right. After this, I saw shepherds overlooking for 12 hours. And behold, three of the sheep departed, arrived, went in, and began building all which was fallen down of that house. But the wild boars hindered them, although they prevailed not. This is Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra and Nehemiah? They're rebuilding the house. Oh, all right. And again, they began to build as before and raised up that tower, which was called a lofty tower. And again, they began to place before the tower a table with every impure and unclean kind of bread upon it. All right, so we know where this is going. So I think the part we are uneducated in is like judges and the, you know, because that, that's where all the kings did this stuff prior to this. Mm-hmm. So we know about this. We know Ezra well. All right. Moreover, also all the sheep were blind and could not see, as were the shepherds likewise, because they built a house. And then at one point, one dude went into it and built a room inside the temple, and he started living in the thing. And Ezra came out and, like, kicked him out. To a bad guy. The guy that was... Yeah, Toba, Toba yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, moreover, all the, also all of the sheep were blind and could not see, as were the shepherds likewise. The, thus were they delivered up to the shepherds for a great destruction, who trod them underfoot and devoured them. Yet was their Adonai silent until all the sheep in the field were destroyed. The shepherds and the sheep were all mixed together, but they did not save them from the power of the beasts. Then he who wrote the Sefer ascended, exhibited it, and read it in the res- residence of Yahuwah of the sheep. He petitioned him for them and prayed, pointing out every act of the shepherds and testifying before him against them all. Then taking the Sefer, he deposited it with them and departed. All right. Um, how long is 90? 90? 90 looks long. 90 looks long. All right. I think we'll call this good, but I think we will take care of our cows and chickens and then come right back to this and finish this up today. So we will get this out and uploaded. Do you guys have anything else on this? 
No, no. Dang it. Hey. Yeah, my apologies for my bad reading and for stuff we do not know. A lot of the stuff is uh, kind of foreign to us, and so this is why we're reading it as a family with all of you guys out there. And we appreciate your time that you're doing it. You had comments you wanted to go over. Do you oh, wait I, to the next I, one? I, I'll wait to the next one because I, I need to deal with Carla's stuff on that. Um, our sister Carla. So I will, uh, yeah, we'll do that in the next one. And I think that is it. Anyone have anything? Sorry uh, for our dog breakout, too. Yeah, sorry for the dog breakout. We just left that in there. Um, it was been even more awkward cutting that out I think um, and working that so uh, you will hear a little bit of a dog riot um, and this is just our life that we deal with all right everybody much love to everybody out there all right shalom, shalom. shalom.